Welcome to the art project. This is part three of the shape project uh, where we learned about organic shapes and geometric shapes and then we learned about windows and piercing and overlapping and going off the edges of the paper. Um, all these things were discussed in the uh, previous videos, part one and part two of the shape project. And here, uh, basically, I'm just painting it in. Uh, one of my students wanted to help me, and so she is assisting me in painting this in, even though uh, all of my students are actually painting in their own individually. But for the sake of the video and making it go a little bit faster, I'm getting her to help me. Um, the only couple of rules for the painting part of this assignment, and uh, they are as follows the background is going to be black uh, of course that's optional I don't think it has to be black but um, I put it on the board so that when my students do it um, most of them will do it black and if they really want to do a different color then come and ask me and we'll talk about it um, the second rule is 50 percent of the composition of each composition must involve a blending of um, each um, of the colors so that one part like right here I'm starting out red and I'm going to blend it into uh, blue and of course it's going to turn purple in the middle and the way I do that is by just simply painting in red where I want it to be red and a little bit further and then without uh, washing my brush out I get a little bit of blue and I start painting that and the red that's in my brush and that blue start to mix together now I get just a little bit of blue and each time I go a little bit further, I grab a little bit more blue and keep adding it. And that way, as I go, it changes to purple. And eventually I'll go back and put a, a, another layer of just straight, clean blue on the very end of that shape that I just painted in. Uh, so like I said, the background's gonna be black. 50% of each composition must involve the blending of two colors. And uh, the 50% part, I'm kind of loose on, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, get out any kind of measuring device and check to see if it's 50% on both of them, but, you know, you can kind of look and tell and see if they did a good job. Uh, the third thing is I just let them use any color of temper paint that they want. Uh, let them decide on the colors. I do explain to them how color families go together better. So like red will blend into yellow better than red will blend into green. Um, analogous colors blend together better than complementary colors. Um, I also insist that they use good craftsmanship and uh, one reason that we go over everything with black sharpie, the outline everything in black sharpie is so that in the end if there is anything that got out of line we can go over the edge with black sharpie in it and it looks good. And then um, last but not least uh, kind of rule number five is to use the same colors on both sides both organic and geometric and there's a little bit of yellow or a lot more yellow on the geometric side than there is on the uh, organic side but I use the same uh, light green that we mixed up on both sides the same blue and the same red and so there's some uh, consistency between both sides of the painting um, so uh, this is pretty much um, the way I did it uh, the rules that are involved. Uh, there's still a lot more painting to be done here. Um, kind of run out of things to say. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the series. Uh, like I said, there are three parts to it. And um, you might have watched the first part and didn't go on to the second part. But I'm hoping now that you're seeing part three, uh, you will like what you see and you can... Uh, Maybe go back and use it in your class if you like it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to email me or uh, leave a comment down below, and I'll try and get in touch with you. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook. You can follow me on uh, Instagram. You can email me. My email is in the, uh, com in the description down below. Um, If you uh, did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
So most of my students are working on this, and one of the things that I noticed, uh, here's some more information for you, one of the things that I did notice is that um, because I've done this before, um, I, I know how to do it. And it took me roughly three days to um, start and get all the way through the painting. It took me about three days, um, and that's not three full days. I'm talking like three class periods maybe, uh, maybe four class periods. But for my students, it's taken about two or three weeks. And the reason for that is a lot of my students don't know how to overlap. They do not know how to make an, um, one object go through the window or pierce another object. And so uh, this has taken a lot of time to, to help them understand that. And uh, so uh, they were really frustrated at the beginning, but um, in order to understand how to do this, you actually absolutely have to use your brain power. Um, no teacher can really show you how to overlap or um, pierce these objects. I mean, they can show you, but you're not going to get it until you use your brain to figure it out. It's a puzzle that has to be solved. Anyway, I think that kind of wraps it up. I uh, hope you enjoyed the series. Give me a thumbs up. Um, if you did enjoy it, uh, leave some comments down below. And if you do some of these, uh, please share them with me on Instagram or through email. Thanks. Go make some art.